In this video, I'm comparing Revit and Vectorworks by modeling the same complex building, Calatrava's Mediopadana train station. It's a great case study for testing how each platform handles freeform geometry and structural repetition. I've modeled the entire thing in both softwares, and I'll walk you through the process, the challenges, and which one I'd choose for this kind of work in the future. The challenge. The Medio Padana station is elegant, rhythmic and highly complex. It features repetitive ribs, flowing curves and a very distinct form. On paper it looks beautiful, but modeling it accurately in 3D is a different story. This project was perfect for pushing both Revit and Vectorworks to their limits and seeing which one supports design freedom without becoming a technical bottleneck. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. Modeling in Revit. I've recorded the full process, so check the link below if you want to see it in more detail. For this one, I worked entirely in Revit's massing environment. Before even opening the software, I spent time carefully planning out the geometry. Once in Revit, I used model lines in elevation to create a rigid framework, just enough to outline the key shapes. From there, I manually adjusted vertex points to shape the mass. That early structure was really a placeholder, a sacrificial form to help guide the design. Once I had the general shape in place, I refined it using splines that passed through the model to define the correct curves. Then, rather than modeling each rib individually, I created a parametric adaptive family. That family was applied across the structure, making it far easier to maintain consistency and adapt to changes without having to remodel from scratch. It was a precise and structured process. Revit handled the task well, but it required precision and structure at every step. You can do it, but it's not practically fluid or forgiving if you want to explore or make changes later. Modeling in Vectorworks. Vectorworks, on the other hand, was much more responsive. Having already modeled the station in Revit helped a lot. I knew exactly how the geometry needed to behave. The subdivision tool invites you to begin with form. You start with a simple volume, like a cube or a dome, and then begin shaping it. You can subdivide the surface into faces, add control points, creases or smooth edges and push or pull vertices in 3D space. It's not parametric in the traditional BIM sense, it's sculptural. For a project like Medio Padana Station, this approach makes perfect sense. The building isn't defined by orthogonal geometry or rigid grids. It flows, it rises and falls in a sequence of sweeping ribs like a frozen wave rolling across the platform. Capturing that sense of movement is hard when you're locked into a procedural step-by-step -step approach. But with subdivision modeling, I could explore the entire gesture of the building in one fluid motion. Once the form was right, I used the shell tool to give it thickness. and then applied the array tool to build out the repeating ribs. There were no constraints to manage, no reference planes to set up, just modeling. It was fast, visual and responsive. For a building like Medio Padana, that freedom made a huge 
difference. I could iterate quickly and focus on the design instead of the workflow, although workflow is still important. Efficiency breakdown. If we compare the two side by side, the Revit model took significantly longer and required more setup and technical control. Vectorworks was faster and more flexible, especially when it came to shaping and editing geometry. Both models look great in the end, but the path to getting there was different. So what's the takeaway? Revit is still my go-to for documentation and coordination and BIM in general, but when it comes to modeling complex freeform architecture, Vectorworks is simply more efficient. It gives you room to explore and iterate without slowing you down. Let me know in the comments if you want to dive into either workflow in more detail, and I'll see you in the next one.